Welcome back to our podcast where today we're talking about how failure is not a setback, but an opportunity to learn, grow and innovate. We also touch upon the importance of resilience and how it's key to success. And join us as we share insights on how perfectionism can hold us back from achieving our goals. So hey there, we're back with uh, Greg DeMarco and uh, we're going to be talking about the power of failure and learning from setbacks and how we move forward from them. So uh, Greg, you've mentioned this in some of our previous um, sessions about how it's important for us to learn from our failures. So that's why, you know, that's why today's topic, I think, is is a good topic because we've mentioned it, you know, before. So now, you know, let's let's go into that into this a little bit deeper. You know, what are some of your thoughts on why, uh, why the where is where is the power of failure in uh, in in doing things? Yeah, thanks, Don. I think uh, that's a great question because um, for so many reasons, I think a lot of people try and hide the failure and, and not admit to it. Uh, let's our you know our ego get. Uh, take takes away from our uh, from actually learning from from this, but I think that listen, failure is is a part of life. No matter who we are, failure is uh, part of who we are. And if we don't learn from it, we don't advance. So you know, there were lots of times in. Uh, I mean, how the heck was I able to grow into? Uh, a, a great career, a sales career, without you know stumbling here and there. The, the, the biggest, the biggest thing about failure is you have to have the ability to learn from it and say, okay, I'm not afraid of the fact that I just failed, but perhaps I can learn something from this, and you know, so next time I don't make the same mistake. And I think that is the power of, of failure: is looking at it in terms of what can I learn from it as opposed to, oh my God, I got to keep this to myself and you know nobody can know that I made a mistake. The reality is, is we all make mistakes. We all get through them and you know our lives are better for it as long as we can learn from them, right? Yeah, it's important for us to, so failure is an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for us to learn. You know, so I think it's, I think it's interesting, you know, when we look at, when we look at sports, say for example, and you know we can look at the Toronto Maple Leafs and how they keep failing, and how they keep trying. Oh, isn't it interesting how you always bring the Leafs into this? You have fan, <laughs> <laughs> particularly particularly after they've gone down three zero. You know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Uh, what a, so what what does cause us to to hold us back? You know, I, I think uh, okay. First of all, failure is 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 an opportunity for us to learn. John Maxwell's book, he he says sometimes you win. He wrote a book called Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. You know, and that's the entire premise of it is that we we learn from our failures. And and I, and when I went into that that sports analogy, I wasn't meaning to actually. Well, actually, I kind of was, but I, I wasn't meaning <laughs> to poke fun at you. But I was I was thinking, you know, in terms of how, you know, actually one of what, what was coming to my mind was, you know, you, you talk about um, a high jumper, you know, when a high jumper goes and, and, and they keep jumping, you know, they're, they're, they have to clear a bar, you know, mm -hmm. and every time they don't clear a bar, they've actually failed. And, and I think, okay, the only way they're going to get better is by learning and by practicing and by keeping, keeping on doing it. But you don't get better by practicing the same thing. You don't get better by doing the same thing. You just you just get better at losing if you practice doing the same thing. So you learn how to do something different, and then you get better at accomplishing what your what your ultimate goal is. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think that failure failure can lead to. You have to think of failure as leading to innovation. Okay. Um, you're, you're innovating. What you're doing is, is you're learning something about what not to do. If, if, if something happened that didn't uh, command the result that you were looking for, obviously a change has to be made, an adjustment. And that's life. You know, it's just if we look at it, if we look at it from the point of view that, you know, this is a learning moment. You know, it's like uh, Edison. 
you know that that old adage about Edison who failed 10,000 times before he actually invented the light bulb. And he, you know, the, it, it had to be said that you know he had to fail that many times in order to learn how to do it. But the thing is, is he kept on it and he made the changes necessary and learned from what didn't work and kept pushing forward. And herein lies one of the biggest the biggest problems with failure is people think because they failed they give up and as soon as you give up there's no chance of 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 succeeding in what it is you're trying to accomplish because you've already given up it's like that that picture that they have on the internet where the guy's digging a tunnel and the guy above him's digging in the tunnel and then the guy below him's digging and then he stops because he's just frustrated and he's this this far from hitting the gold and then the guy at top is he's still picking away and he reaches it and that's the, that's a good analogy because that's what happens to a lot of people is they end up they they always always end up failing and quitting a step before they reach success yeah that's an that's an interesting point uh when we were talking about innovation i was i was thinking about some of the some of the uh, drug companies, you know, they do a lot of research and, and development on, on their drugs. Mm -hmm. And some of, the, some of the drugs that we have today um, were actually started out for something else. Like there's, there's this one drug they advertise on, on, on TV now, or I've seen the ad everywhere. It's called something Zempic, Uzempic or whatever. And people, it was designed to help people with their diabetes. You know, if you had type two diabetes, you would take this, and and I think you get one shot, or I don't, I don't know how it works, but what they found out was that it also helps people lose weight. So there's a lot of people that are trying to get on this drug that really don't have diabetes, but they well, want to use, weight. It, but they want to lose weight. So that yeah. so it has has that, and there's another one uh, that it comes in little blue pills that started off as a heart medicine. And they found, <laughs> <laughs> and they found out that, that that one had a had a different side effect as well. So, you know, they started marketing <laughs> marketing it as, as something else. You know, but uh um we'll we'll leave that one there. <laughs> That's innovation though, right? <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean absolutely it's innovation. I mean and and you, like especially in I, I mean I would think that in in, in uh with the drug companies it, with with um uh you know, you spend so much money on research and development. You know, if you find that this drug at the end of the day fails, I mean, that's what do you like? Okay, well, that's just chalk that one up to experience. But if you're able to innovate and use, you know, what your failure is, you know, in, in another as another product for another problem, you know, then it's, uh, you know, that, that just increases the profitability of the company. So it's interesting, you know, that, that, um, you know, failure is, is, is a way that we grow. We, if we recognize our failure, we, we, it can lead to better growth if we, if we uh, do it right. It also can initiate innovation. But what would hold you back? You know, what, what, are, what are things that, that cause you to um, maybe consider failure as, as, as the best option? And um, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna be transparent here and I wanna, I wanna talk about um, something that we were talking about in our previous, in our, in our conversation just before we started recording this, and that's perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, that I find um, holds me back sometimes is, is I want to make sure before I step out and do something, I want to make sure that what I'm stepping out and doing is perfect, you know, or maybe not perfect because I know that nothing's perfect, but I want to know that it's good. You know, and I think that was what I that was what I told you was I said I you know I've developed a number of different lead magnets you know for for different things and but I, I hesitate to put them out there because I want to know that they're good. Well, uh, yeah, I, I I understand that, and and the problem with perfectionism is uh, it's only it's what you you it's what you believe is perfect perfect or what you think. Uh, is good enough to be presented. That doesn't mean that that that's what other people think. So that's what holds people back is because this this notion of perfectionism it doesn't matter how you you define perfectionism for yourself. 
the reality is what holds you back is, is you think that this has to be presented in a specific way in order for people to really like it. Well, the point is, is you don't have a clue what other people really like. That's the problem with perfectionism. And a lot of the times, and I teach this in my, uh, in my business course, is that a lot of the times, Don, it's, it's better to just present something and put it out there. Uh, and you present it and put it out there because otherwise you could sit there for the next six months or a year trying to figure out how something's worth presenting and you'll always come to the conclusion that it's not. But the reality is, is the prototype that maybe is that exists for you and you put it out there in the market, people will probably find that it's a lot, it, it, it's fine. You can make tweaks to it as you go along, but the, the reality is it's more of an excuse for people not to put it out there because they're afraid. And that's okay. That's okay to be afraid. But the problem is, is it holds back any kind of innovation that you're doing, and it also puts you in a negative mind, mindset. That's the real killer. The negative mindset. Yeah. Yeah, it, it puts them in a bad attitude. It puts them in the, the lack of enthusiasm. The worst thing it does, though, is it gives them a lack of confidence. And I can tell you that 95% of these people that are, are, are putting out, saying, you know, well, it's not perfect. I've got to improve it. It's got to look better. 95% of those people have something remarkable to give and help other people with. It's just that they never get to that stage because their their lack of confidence. It's a, it's an excuse to procrastinate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, and, you know, but that's, it's, you know, the first part is awareness and understanding that that's what's happening. And somebody's got to call you out on it. Someone's got to say, you know what, I bet you that, that, let's say, for example, that ebook that you wrote uh, is a lot better than you think. Most people, you got to understand is you're an expert at something. And here's, here's one of the things that I always fell into, which was awful. I always thought that everybody knew what I knew, so what am I going to teach them? It wasn't until I started doing some things like offering some free calls and having people come on my calls, and they're asking me questions, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, you don't really know this? And all of a sudden, I realized that there's a lot of people that don't know what I know. That's how I got the confidence to go forward and say, okay, well, obviously these people are coming to me for a reason. And without doing that, I would have never understood that. I would have gave up and I would be probably doing something else right now. It's kind of like jumping in and say, hey, the water's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think um, uh, with, uh, in real estate, one of the, one of the areas, or maybe, maybe in, in, a, in a lot of different businesses, uh, Everybody, everything on the internet now these days is video. Yeah. And the fear of making a video is, is significant for a lot of people. They don't want to be in front of the camera. I mean, look at, look at you and me, two ugly old guys, you know, on, on here. Uh, speak for yourself, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a handsome guy. <laughs> so, I, but, but I mean, like, but that's that's the reality of it, right? So, and particularly in real estate, you know, where where everything is, it seems like everything is on video. But some people don't want to make the video because right. because they think it's not it's not going to be good enough. Well, the video that I make that is not good enough is better than the one that you don't make because you're waiting yeah. because you're thinking it's it's got to be perfect. And yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's an example of it. You know, is is get it, it done is better than perfect. Right? Yeah. And, and here's, here's a great example too. Uh, I was coaching somebody the other day in my business course and she was struggling with trying to get out there and do her first videos. And I just said to her, you know what, everybody, like when I first started, I didn't like the way I looked on video. I didn't like the way I sounded on video. It was awful, but I just started recording on my cell phone and they were only for about a minute to maybe three minute videos. But as I did each one, I got better and better and better. And the reality is, is people are coming to hear what you say. They are not coming there to criticize you about your looks and your voice. And she did her first video the other day, I noticed, and she did really well. And but this is this is it. You have to be able to step outside that comfort zone and you have to make it. You have to 
listen, whatever you're thinking about your situation, I guarantee you the majority of people are not thinking what you're thinking because they're not inside your head. They want the information. You know, the, the number one thing that people are looking for in business, when someone comes to you for your services, you know what they want? They want results. That's all they want. They want the result. They want something that is going to help them solve their problem. That's what they're looking for is a result. As long as you can give that result, you're golden. So <clears throat> we um, need to learn that the power of failure is learning from the setbacks and moving forward. Yeah. What are, what are, what are three tips that, that somebody should look at, you know, if they're, if they're experiencing some failure in, in what they're doing. And I think that they have to look at say, okay, the power of failure is learning from your setbacks and moving forward. So the first tip that we would give to them is to make sure that they assess, you know, what, what, what actually went wrong and did it really go wrong? You know, I, I think that sometimes, did it go wrong or was it not as good as you wanted it to be? You know, there's two different things. We just talked about perfectionism. So perfectionism is, is the idea of, okay, it's not as good as I want it to be, but did it go wrong? Did it, what did it accomplish? So I think the first, the first tip is to assess what actually went wrong and why did it go wrong? So then what would tip number two be? So that, that's a really good tip because that's, that's really important in progressing to the next stage. I think getting feedback, Here's an interesting, uh, and I'll do this as a quick uh, analogy. I was on a course the other day, and um, the the guy was obviously doing an offer and wanted people to buy into uh, this other course. Um, so after it was all closed and everything, he sent out an email to people and said, "By the way, why didn't if you didn't uh, join the course, why didn't you join the course?" He asked them specifically for feedback. Then he came back two days later after he got the feedback and said, it's, it's, um, here's the reason why people didn't, the ones who didn't sign, this is why. And that's important is to get feedback from other people. So if you fail on something, get feedback from others as to why, why did that happen? Because your input is important. You assessing what you think went wrong is really important. But the second part of that, I think is getting feedback from others and find out, find it. You got to be strong and you got to be, willing to, to accept the feedback. Yeah. Yes. We, we don't know. Well, sometimes with that's the feedback, that's what we're afraid of. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but it's, it's important to, to, it's important to get it. I think, I think the third tip that I would say would be get back on the horse, you know, absolutely. Uh, so I think that's, that's my third tip would be to, to get back on the horse and to try again, you know, uh, refine yeah. what you're refine, what you're doing. Um, and, and make a decision, you know, like moving forward, like what do you have to make? What changes do you have to make and get on and, and, and do it again? And yeah, I agree with you. And, and um, you know, hey, listen, I, I used to, when I was in the boat business, I used to with people that I didn't, uh, I couldn't sell a boat to, I would email them and find out why, why they didn't buy from me. Was it me? Was it the boat? Was it the wrong, you know, what happened? And that's always good. And I'll tell you, the, one of the key things is, is uh, resilience. And I think as you go through these trials and errors, you build a certain amount of resilience. And it teaches you. It's like, uh, you know, people who work on, uh, you know, shoveling ditches or whatever. They get calluses on their hands. And that's, things get tougher. So it's easier and easier as they shovel. And that's what it, this resilience is all about. You go through the trial and error of, of learning what failure, why, why you failed, what you need to change, and it, it builds you a stronger and stronger character as you go forward in life. That's how I see it. Yeah, and we, and we can take encouragement from the Maple Leafs, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs, that they're, they're resilient <laughs> and, they, and they keep trying. You know, year after year, they keep failing and they keep coming out thinking they can do it better. But that's, that's, okay. that's okay. They're, resi they're a resilient, oh, they're you know, resilient it's, group. It's, it's funny that you've got all this confidence about your, your Habs being a Habs fan when, you know, really there's not much to talk about there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it's all good. It's all in good fun. We're obviously yeah. hockey fans. No, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually thought I, I have a friend that he is, he is such a diehard Maple Leaf fan, like, like, 
they're, they're the greatest team. Beginning of the year, they're the greatest team in the world, right? And he probably still thinks they're the greatest team in the world. But yesterday when, when they lost again, I thought they're, they're down 3 nothing. I said, maybe I should call him and see if he's okay, you know, but. That would be that would be devastating. Anyway, it's it's I'm 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 the the Toronto Maple Leafs are a very successful hockey organization, and uh, they they've done and and hawk and winning the Stanley Cup is they say is one of the hardest trophies to win, but um, they I think the idea of those athletes they they know what it's like to to lose and but then to do what it takes, they're willing to take the steps necessary to get better, and I think one of the things is they, they, they learn what they have to get better at. Uh, they, they analyze, they take a look at what, what went wrong. Um, and, and then they say, how do, how are we going to fix it? So they're very intentional about their approach. And I think we have to look at that and say, uh, you know, be intentional about what you're doing, you know, understand what went wrong, get feedback from, you know, other people. And, and then, get on get on the horse again and play another game you know you you have to you have to get going so but i want to yep. thank you greg uh, do you have well, any closing comments that you want to make or hey listen uh everybody everybody has failures and i i run into this a lot with with the uh mindset coaching that i do um and the, you know the reality is is that's how you have to sort of reframe things and i think that's an important uh thing to talk about is reframing you know, how you look at it. Failure is just an opportunity to learn something new and learn something about how we can improve our situation. And if you're looking at it on a business level, it's about improving your customer's situation. And that's a, not a, that's not a bad thing. That's a really good thing. John Maxwell talks about it being intentional all the time. And, uh, and I think he's right about that. I think, uh, you know, we have to look at how we serve others and, and that's really the important part of it. So, that's all I have to say. That's good. Well, thank you very much, Greg DeMarco. And if you want to be in touch with either one of us, we'll have our contact information in the comments below. So um, we've over there, over there, you know, but down there. It's that way. It's that way. <laughs> thank you very much.